I'm permaculturing a food forest in Guatemala. Here it is. You're looking at partially established food forest thing that's going on on that side of a creek that runs to the center of the property. These are terrace beds. This is my hill. This hill is filled with lettuces, legumes, woo, slippery ground here. It's all very slippery ground. It's dust clay or it's wet and muddy, one of the two. Never, never much of an in-between in Guatemala. As you can possibly see from sprouts everywhere, the whole hill is completely sprouted with legumes and foods of various types and kinds. Sprouts come down as far as here, all the way in and up. They're growing nice and everywhere. Very beautiful. And this is the natural mulching that I've put down. Natural mulch versus sawdust. You never want to use sawdust except for except on the animals. The watering system is primarily sprinklers right now. The system is going to be replaced when the rainy season comes in about two months. The rainy season will be here. Cilantro chia bed. All cilantro and chia. After that's done in harvest, the squash will start to grow in. There. I've got legumes down in it now. This are the these are the tomatoes. Tomatoes in Guatemala do not do so well. They don't grow very big, large area, small yield. Delicious. Delicious. And inside here, I have chia growing everywhere. Flaxseed growing inside there. These are, this is buckwheat, barley wheat, bok choys, carrots, good mixture throughout, some basil in there, this one <clears throat> is a monoculture, it was done by the gardener that's here, so you see I've seeded throughout the whole thing. The whole thing is seeded now. Legume and flax throughout the whole thing. That's going to cause this to be a very good bed. In a year's time at least. Black eyed peas, crawlers, and lots and lots of chia. They love to grow in the shade, so these guys are going to grow up and along, and the chia are going to use them for shade. I'm not sure what that plant is right there. I planted that here by hand. Down there is another bed, terrace. Seems to be sprouting beans. That's, that is primarily from the gardener that is here. He is a monoculturalist. So I'm showing you some of his monoculture that I am taking over. Monocultural strips, as you can see. The whole thing has been seeded. Very well, legumes and flax throughout it to grow on top of what he's growing here and also what I'm going to end up throwing in and on it as well. Now, I'm going to come back here very soon and throw down lots of mulch, natural mulch, to keep moisture in, to keep pests away, to keep birds from eating all of this. Otherwise, it's just going to be sun-baked and die. Chia and radishes. Primarily chia and radishes here. I legume through this whole thing. This is a permaculture bed. This one is completely permacultured. This has legumes in it. This has lettuces in it. It has thymes. It has buckwheats, barleys, flax, has basically everything I could possibly need or want to grow. 
bok choy, basil coming up here. I believe it may be a tomato plant. This one is a pepper plant. More basils. Basil is hard. It's it's really it loves a lot of fertilizer, lots and lots of fertilizer. And I don't have any animals here, so it's kind of hard to do that. So that is it so far on that end. That's the monoculture that's being taken over as a permanent agricultural site. This is my mulch pile. All that staying back. It's been pulled down from the top of that hill and everything has been stripped all the way down around the citrus trees, around the lemongrass. This is lemongrass. And this is a citrus tree. This is the hill up there. All that's been pulled down. The high hill up there, where you see all that stuff, that is going to be turned into food foresting and cabins. This is, this has plans to become a yoga retreat for retirement. Now, coming in a little further so we can see more of what's going on. a lot of chop and drop Ugh. and so this is my mulch here Guatemalan mulch beautiful stuff beautiful beautiful stuff just teeming with little organisms throughout it lots of debris to break down natural rocks dead seeding everywhere adds more enzymes it's just perfect in every in every possible way. I couldn't ask for better mulch. There's also stones in it. Large ones you don't want. They could fall on your sprouts and whatnot, you know. I usually take them and sling them off the mountain. Man, that's a long drop. But, for the most part, little rocks are really well, really good. These get into the soil and they'll help little aeration places and places for roots to grab. Especially the tangling roots from the legumes that are going to be growing. A lot of ground cover and whatnot. Now, this bamboo, uh, it's bam, banana, banana stock. Banana is stock is actually quite wonderful. This is pigeon pea. It's a younger one. It's not producing fully yet. That's a legume tree here. This is a chop and dropper right here. Completely useless other than timber, building material, things like that. Can't eat it. I mean, you might be able to eat the pods. I don't think it'll hurt you. It's extremely small peas in a very big pod. It's the edge where you drop down. More lemongrass that'll grow in its clumper. It'll be spread out. This big tall, beautiful thing here is a legume. This is pigeon pea legume. This is mostly for, this is mostly just for being used for as a legume uh, to nitrate the soil. This bed was recently made. Soon I'm going to be seeding it. These are going to be flower beds here. Flower beds, diversified flower beds through here. There's the trail I'm looking up, down, and through here. Very precarious here. Very, very precarious. This is the creek running down and in. That's the walkway up. That is a long drop. Very long drop there. Very beautiful long drop. They tried to grow ferns through here. Cute idea, but the ferns aren't taking because there's way too much sunlight. The ferns over here are going to handle it because they don't get too much sunlight in the day. But these guys are getting beaten down and heated up. And maybe you can't see it. But here's an extreme rarity right here. That is a red fern. I've rarely ever seen them anywhere in the world in all my travels. There's a red fern growing right there, naturally and wildly out of a natural system. 
adds diversity.